wires what I got so far. I've got a mess of wires here. I was just wiring some stuff up and decided to make a video. Keep everybody updated. Key switch works. This is cardboard. Uh, I doubled up some cardboard, flattened out some boxes, uh, hot glued it together to get the thickness that it is. It's a little over uh, a quarter inch and it's going to actually be smaller than that. So all my measurements are going to have to be adjusted when I uh, send the measurements to be cut out of plastic or um, uh, uh, I want to do 16th inch thick steel for stuff like uh, around these edges here have it all connected which probably end up costing quite a bit because they'd have to cut this whole piece out in the center uh, the um, I might just do it all out of metal just to keep it sort of sturdy uh, this isn't mounted there it's going to be this is how it'll be though and then attachment will go up here the, the, the top of this will be about uh, an eighth of an inch underneath uh, this bracket. It'll be setting flush up against, let me turn the lights on here. It'll be setting flush up against this uh, connector for holding these posts on. Oops, that's not good. Take that out of there before I crush my electronics. Still got to get some more, some stuff from uh, Parallax. This is an old board that I had from quite a while ago, probably 2007, and it still works. Um, this is the high current contactor. It's a constant high current contactor. This goes to, I believe it's 100 amps, and this isn't going to be pulling more than 73, so that's the capabilities of the uh, of the batteries. Um, this cable here is only rated for 50 amps, so uh, I can't put more than 50 amps through these. Well, I probably could. It's probably not going to hurt it, but uh, I have to be careful with it. So I'm going to try to limit this with fuses. Um, I have a bunch of stuff everywhere. I gotta clean this up. This one here is adjusted for the Raspberry Pi. It's at 5.25 volts, so I don't get that uh, low power icon. Uh, it's at 5.25 volts at the maximum amps this can handle. And this is going to be wired, this isn't in the schematic that I showed uh, in my last post. Um, the Raspberry Pi isn't up here yet, it's over on another counter. Uh, I'm getting some software installed on that. And it's going to be a Raspberry Pi 3 instead of a Raspberry Pi 0. So it'll probably be about as big as this here. So I'm using this for... I'm hoping that I can have this over here because the motor brakes are going to be powered by these types of relays, these smaller ones. And also the Raspberry Pi is going to be powered by one of these relays. The propeller is going to be powered by this here, which is capable of 20 amps. All the power going into the relays is going to be off of this. Um, this is a constant uh, current and constant voltage uh, regulator goes down to 12 volts here. Um, these are constant current, constant voltage regulators, and they're pretty, they were pretty cheap. I got five for like $9.99 on Amazon. And I believe this one, I have it, I marked it. This trim pot is for adjusting the voltage. This one's the current. I got the current maxed out here, which is five amps, or it says it's five amps. And this here is the voltage, which I set at 5.25 volts. And I put this in here so that I can just, by sight, just see that this one's the one that I have adjusted for the Raspberry Pi. Because they come 
uh, if you plug this into a 24 volt system, uh, these regulators that I tested straight out of the bag, they're going to be putting 14 volts out and you don't want to send that to the Raspberry Pi. So make sure you adjust these before connecting anything to it. But uh, this one here is going to be connected to the relay. And uh, before and after the output on the input and the output so I can uh, keep track of when this is fully up to voltage and stuff which is like split seconds but I don't want to send any uh, too many low voltages to the Raspberry Pi because it doesn't have all the protection circuitry so this is going to be connected to one of these relays as well so that way uh, I can ensure that this is on and up to the, the voltage and current that I that the Raspberry Pi is going to need which will probably be like two seconds just wait two seconds and it should be okay um, everything's in here pretty mounted mounted pretty good I don't really like the fact of having a shunt on cardboard or even 24 volts 70 amps potentially on cardboard so this cardboard is mainly a template and uh, I spray painted it, primed it, and spray painted it, and it's getting all scratched up and stuff, but it's not going to be on here permanently. So, this is what I've got so far. There's going to be some cutouts over here by the wheels for the uh, uh, the motor wires and the brake cables. I don't know if I said that already. But they're going to come through, and these relays will handle five, I think, five amps DC. I'll have to check the the, the data sheet on these, and uh, it won't take more than three three amps to power the uh, brake. Um, and after that, the only thing that I'd be working on are the sensors, which. I could use eight. I have this designed to, well, I, I laid out the cardboard so that I could have eight of these on it, front, back, left, and right, and then at 45 degree angles. But what I was thinking is if I could just mount them here and have the pan tilt mechanism, I can get a whole lot more range, have two of them in the front, one on each side for obstacle detection. And if I need to check something I can just have it turn over this way so there's going to be four of them at least four but I might have them permanently mounted eight I know I'm going to have a pan tilt bracket in the front that's going to have a camera on it and any attachments are going to have their own cameras and stuff and I'm trying to use all the official Raspberry Pi stuff just so if I need support I can I can get uh, some decent support with it that's what I got. I hope uh, you guys keep watching what I'm doing. I got a lot of views in the in the forums. Yeah, it's not drawing any current right now. 24.82 volts. I'd like to have one a separate one at set at 12 volt for each battery, so I can keep track of uh, which batteries are dying. I don't want to fully drain. Uh, either of the batteries beyond 11 volts because these were down to 3 volts when I first started working with them, these batteries. And I I spent two weeks, uh, about a week a piece on these batteries, uh, putting it on a smart charger and you had to just fiddle with it until it starts to charge. And I had to pair both of them up in 12 volt configuration and start charging it that way just so it had the higher voltage, uh, higher reading in the um, smart charger. You need a dumb charger. If these are down below 11 volts, you're going to need a dumb charger, uh, like an old standard uh, battery charger, to uh, give life to uh, dead batteries again. Because these were sitting for probably three years without being charged. And I don't know if I turn this on or off. Key works. Going to need a power resistor either across here or across here because this is going to be before this it's all going to be low current once this is powered on 
um, then it'll make the, the wheels movable. It's a lot of relays, but it'll be a clicky little bot. <laughs> I don't think it's pretty all that little, but this is pretty much the same con the the motion and control of it's no different than a bobot. I mean, bobots only got two drive wheels in the center. It would be considered a mid-wheel drive robot, so that's all these uh, power chairs are. Is, well, the mid-wheel drive ones, they have front and rear-wheel drive ones, but the mid-wheel drive ones are no different than a, a, a Bobot. Anything that you'd run on a Bobot would probably run one of these as long as you have the correct circuitry and the correct voltages. And I'm going to continue wiring this today. I'm using the stiff wire, which is only rated for 50 amps. And I actually like it because it stays put. I mean, that bend isn't coming out unless I unbend it. <laughs> so it's, it's worked out pretty good for this laying out where I want the wires to go. This one here is going to come out, come out, bend over a little bit, and come up to this here. And then this will connect over to some of the other um, posts here and everything else that needs uh, either 24 or 12 volts will pull off of these two. The one for this is underneath here. I got it tied into the same one. I could do that with a couple of these, but I don't want to get too high in stacking these up. Uh, yeah, I think that's it for this video. It's coming along. This stuff is going to be fixed. I cut off too much wire. I was just didn't want to bend it back and keep wasting wire. I'm just trying to use what I need because I'm trying to keep it as minimal as possible. And I really overdid it with this, but just because I had to redo all the wiring again. I've done it like three or four times so far. And... Uh, the Anderson power connectors, they're pretty cheap, but still, if you're going to redo the whole thing, it's going to cost you like 50 bucks to get all the stuff that you need. Uh, and the, the case is separate price from the contacts that are inside the, the case, the housings. Uh, these things are all separate. You have to buy those all separate. Everything's like separate, and you have to put it all together from Anderson. But it's coming up long okay uh, hopefully I get this all figured out for people that want to do it on their own they see one of these in a pawn shop or in, in the paper for sale don't spend too much on it if you uh, if someone says it's been sitting and they're just just want to get rid of it deduct the cost of the batteries from it because those things are going to be if if they go two or three months without being charged they're they're trash they should be thrown out. That's how these are. These should be thrown out. So that's 600 bucks in batteries right there. <coughs> um, the motors. Uh, this one needs new brushes. This one does not. But if I replace the brushes in this motor. And not the other motor. Then I'm going to have a problem with. This one not spinning as well as this one. Once the brushes are worked in. And so the, I, I actually need four new brushes for, for this and replace all the brushes at the same time. So if you're playing with these, uh, make sure you get those brushes. They're probably $5 a piece and you can get them at any medical supply store. Just tell them what kind of power chair you have and you need the, um, the brushes, for, the motor brushes. And if you messed up your brake and you want to put it back, uh, you could probably do the same thing. They probably cost maybe 60 bucks for the whole brake mechanism including the plate they sell them all and it's like one whole unit you can get or you can get each individual piece including like if you're missing the rubber on this you can you can buy those separate but these i think these chairs are discontinued so whatever is left in stock is what we're dealing with with this particular type of chair this is a quantum 6000 z so Try to avoid these older ones. 
uh, you might be able to even upgrade the electronics in a newer one, but you, uh, the way it works is when uh, Medicaid pays for these for an individual, they keep them for five years and they maintain them for five years and after the five years is up they no longer maintain them. Uh, and you'll be lucky if the, the, the people who make the power chairs maintain them after five years. They come out with new models all the time. Uh, th this, this base with everything on it uh, and I think it includes a basic controller for the back for the proprietary electronics those cost brand new about seven thousand dollars so this is expensive equipment when you buy it brand new if you can find it used for like six hundred bucks get it and you can do stuff like this with it but if you're not gonna uh, do something useful if you're just going to get it to just make an RC car out of it I mean you're probably sort of wealthy you don't want to do something like that well you can if you want to but it's up to you um, it probably would be a waste of money to do something like that just to play around and drive around except to prove that you can do it but this here I actually want to be I want it to be functional the camera's going to keep it uh, going throughout the house help try to uh, do obstacle detection and stuff like that and uh, if a disabled person wants to see what they got in their fridge a little arm can come up open the fridge and they can look in the fridge as long as they want and not have to move from where they're at other than that I think I rambled on long enough this video is going to take forever to upload I can upload any length video now through YouTube. I've been using YouTube so long they allow that. Usually it's a 20 minute video but uh, I don't want to take it that long. It's already 17 minutes. Um, I don't know if there's anything people want to know that uh, I've had problems with or something. Just ask and I might be able to uh, answer it if I had that problem or I don't know how many people are following me along and actually doing this. I'd like, I'd like to see Parallax actually build one out of the one of these things here. I mean, they're the brains. I'm just using what they've made available from Parallax and then Raspberry Pi Foundation. Nobody's helping me with this. I'm doing it all on my own, and I've put in probably about, say maybe fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars into this and some of the stuff I've had to completely throw out because it just didn't didn't work the way I expected and uh, tools and stuff like that I'm probably into this about three thousand dollars just for the tools and uh, the motor controller was the most expensive this uh, the, the the fabrication of the base is probably or of the uh, of the case is probably going to be I'm assuming probably two, three hundred dollars to have someone fabricate it. I'm just going to go to a Windows and uh, window place and see how much having this made out of like um, uh, plastic, uh, eighth inch thick plastic would cost, and then I'm going to take it to a uh, metal fabricator and see how much it would cost to have it done out of metal, and whatever's cheaper, I'm going to go with. Until I can get some extra money to uh, have it really sturdy. I'd really like it out of metal, but I think it's going to be sort of expensive. And I'll end it here. Hope you guys enjoy watching me make a mess out of everything here. It's actually not looking too bad. I'd like to shorten up some of these wires and make them more even. Because this wire is the same length as this one. But this one's run shorter than this one, so this one's like way up in the air and it's all weird underneath. I want to fix all that and make it look like it was made this way. Thanks for watching.